Oh my goodness, what a harvest. Welcome to that 1870s homestead, friends. My name's Rachel, and there was no way I was gonna be able to take you guys out in the garden today to do this harvest because it's just so hot and muggy, and I am like soaking wet, sweating, and a disgusting mess. So I decided before I even went out there, I'm just gonna go do the harvest, bring it inside, and show you guys what a midsummer harvest looks like with the intention to um, share with you how much food you can grow in a very, very small space. My, while I have almost seven acres, I garden for my family um, and our family's needs in a very small footprint. So I wanna encourage you, if you're just beginning gardening, and it's okay if your garden wasn't that successful, if you're just starting out, but look forward to what you can achieve. And if you're just interested in gardening for food security with everything that's going on in the world, what's possible? So this is just harvest number one. We'll have many, many harvest, similar, different varieties, different food crops, but let's get into it. And we're gonna go basket by basket around the countertop and see what we've got. Nationwide, the average size of a backyard in suburbia across the nation is 60 by 100, or 70 by 100, something like that. Seven, 6,000 to 7,000 square feet. Whatever dimensions you use to make that up. My garden is probably 42 by 42 square feet. So um, you still have backyard to play. Set up your barbecue, set up your patio table, set up the kiddie pool, whatever you need to do to use up some free space potentially. But if you have the average typical size suburban backyard, you're either going to be able to fit a garden similar to my footprint or even expand a garden, maybe even put in fruit trees. So I'm just gonna, I wanna share this to inspire people that you do not need this huge land to grow your family's needs with respect to like canned goods and sauces and condiments and all the fun things. You can do it right where you are today. So I'm gonna go in here and let's just start with basket number one. What did we bring in? And I'll talk about some of the things that I've already put up from the garden. So in basket number one, I get asked all the time, where do I get these baskets? Because they're so nice to just rinse out and wash your produce. Um, I got them just at Tractor Trailer Supply. You can find them at Rural King, Family Farm and Home, basically any supply store like that. So we have lots and lots of broccoli shoots little side shoots. So I've already done the big broccoli harvest, but what I did was I just cut off the crown, the broccoli, not the crown, but you know, the big bulk stem crown. And then for a month or more, I've been harvesting side shoots. And so let's pull all this out and let's see, if you just leave your broccoli plants, how much more broccoli can you get? And I've done this probably four times so far and a couple times I've missed but can you guys see that nice little pile that's a nice that's probably a sir um side serving for Todd and I and maybe a guest so I'm going to you should blanch it I never blanch anything because I'm a lazy homesteader I'm a lazy gardener um, everything I do here is just the fastest, simplest method. So all I'm gonna do is throw this in a Ziploc baggie, squeeze all the air out and throw it in the freezer. And we'll have future uh, broccoli beef um, over rice with just this nice little extra harvest I got out of the garden. So if you wanna eat it fresh, mix up some your own homemade ranch dressing dip, dip it in, whatever you wanna do you can grow your lots and lots of broccoli. Now, like I said, it was super, super hot out today. So my basil is looking pretty sad because it was like the second thing I harvested while I was out there. But this is probably the fourth or fifth big basil harvest I've harvested off my basil plants. And they're all just growing in between my tomato plants. So 
Oh, I usually just chop this up and I'll put some in the freezer bags or um, we still have tons of pesto from last year, so I won't be making any pesto. Um, if you guys have any ideas like cool ways to preserve basil, let me know. Basil makes great addition to lemonade, to iced teas. Um, a lot of it I have hanging in my dining room from the light fixture to dry naturally and I'll crush that up and we haven't bought basil from a grocer in a long time. Now, oh, a few more broccolis. Look at this glorious little basket. Look at that first big harvest of tomatoes. Nice, beautiful, beautiful tomatoes all different varieties. So that's gonna be my tip to a first time gardener too, is grow yourself a bunch of varieties of tomatoes because variety is the spice of life and that certainly is true when it comes to making salsas, spaghetti sauces, um, barbecue sauces, anything that is a tomato product, you're going to get so much more depth of flavor if you grow a lot of different varieties than if you just planted one standard type of tomato. So throw in some of those yellows and oranges and reds and pinks and greens, and you're gonna get that wow factor. All right, so that's all that's in this basket. Lots of different tomatoes, cherry tomatoes. I will show you that this one was from two days ago. So that was kind of the first nice harvest of tomatoes. So I think with that amount of tomatoes, I could easily do a nice serving um, canning session of salsa, but I'm gonna try, I've not mastered ketchup yet, so that's on my list this year to master ketchup. Um, so we're gonna try our hand at making ketchup with this first round. Basket number two is the heaviest. Woo. All right, so I grew celery for the first time last year. And I learned you don't need a lot of celery to make celery, but you know what? When all my starts do well, I end up planting them all. So this is all celery. So I um, learned last year, being my first time growing it, you can do kind of like almost like cut and come again, maybe a couple crops of celery. That's beautiful celery. And um, cut it back probably midsummer, and then you'll have a fall crop. So that's what I did this year. I also will chop the leaves off, freeze dry those. We'll have some, our own homemade celery salt, um, celery seasoning, add it to, maybe not celery salt, celery powder, really. Good to add to stuffings, um, all that kind of stuff. Chicken salad, anything that you would put celery in that you want celery flavor. If you don't have enough celery, then you can just um, use your dehydrated leaves for celery flavoring. Now what I do with this, you can can celery. It is going to basically turn mushy though. So we freeze dried a lot last year for this batch, this first round, I'm just gonna dice it and I'm gonna put it in freezer bags and freeze it. Okay, this is a fun one. What is this? I don't know. <laughs> Complete volunteer. It is obviously a cross of a yellow summer squash and probably a pumpkin, probably. Maybe a zucchini, I don't know. But we're going to open it up, see if it's something usable. If it's usable, I will probably shred it and add it to my shredded zucchini. If it looks more like pumpkin inside, we might try making um, some canned pumpkin or po a small batch of pumpkin butter, but we're gonna cut into this and see what it looks like before I decide what to use it. I've already, already harvested one exactly like this and I fed it to my pigs. So just because you get some wonky volunteers that you might not like to eat, I bet your animals sure would. So if I end up deciding that whatever's in here, I don't want it, my pigs will want it. All right, now let's see how the best way is to show you this. Okay, so we have a nice 
harvest of dill. So I've got a lot of pickles to do. So it's all in here, kind of all over the place. But I went through the garden because it's just growing randomly for me and harvested a lot of dill. Let's see if I can show you this. The last harvest of peas probably, I kid you not, it has been 90 degrees here. These are Mr. Big P from Haas Tools. Guys, there was still flowers out there today. It is July 24th and we have had so such a heat wave this summer and it's just surprising to me that they're still holding on and producing. But I would guess that this is probably my last good harvest. And it's probably gonna be like, once I shell them all, maybe a, a quart and a half. Zucchini, one. Zucchini, two. Zucchini, three. Zucchini, four. So four zucchinis and then I have one, two, three, four, four on the counter from two days ago that I harvested. And more dill. What else? Oh, okay, we still have some cucumbers. Cucumber one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. More dill for the cucumbers and pickles. Get all that out of there before I lose track of it. And then I have one, two, three, four, five on the counter, and I probably have seven in my crisper drawer in the refrigerator. So we're ready to make our first round of pickles. I am all out of my favorite, oh, spicy honey pickles. Guys, they are so, so good. They're a little, like a little tiny hint of heat, but that honey sweetness with the jalapenos and banana peppers in there, you guys have to try them. I completely made up the recipe and was like, I didn't have sugar at the time. Well, I'm gonna use honey and see how that turns out. It, I just had a huge cucumber year a couple years ago. And so these are all gonna be made into my spicy honey pickles because we need to restock. Now that that's all empty, that is what I have of peas to shell. So what can you do with zucchini? Oh my goodness. Shred it, you know, make your zucchini bread. Mock crab cakes, guys, they really taste like mock crab cakes. I mean like crab cakes, so good. I've got a recipe on the channel for that. Um, mock pineapple cube it up like kind of like little pineapple wedges can it in pineapple juice with a little bit of additional sugar and it will taste just like good replacement pineapple you'll be able to fool anyone if you throw it in recipes sweet and sour chicken um, pineapple upside down cake you can pretty much fool a lot of people so um, i'm going to be shredding this i add my zucchini to anything that I'm bulking that I need a lot on the pantry shelf. So if it's chili base, if it's spaghetti sauce, if it's salsas, um, what else do I add it to? Basically you get the idea. Anything that, cause zucchini will take the, on the flavor of anything and it adds a lot of bulk and you can almost do 50 to 50. Zucchini with apples to make a big batch of applesauce. Um, so I'm going to just be shredding this and when the time comes, I'll use it for what I need. In the meantime, it'll go in the freezer. Basket number three. You ready? Are you getting excited about growing your own food yet in your backyard? Can you see it? Can you picture it? This is a lot of food guys. And honestly, this is just the beginning. There will be weeks and weeks and weeks like this where you're just bringing baskets and basket baskets of harvest in so in basket number three now i had a pitiful year with my green beans so i just recently planted additional green beans for a fall crop because basically what i'm pulling in right now from the few bush beans that came in i'm just trying to pull them all out it's enough for a good 
dinner size, maybe a little bit more. So I'm pulling all the beans out. My dog just got one that dropped. And then we're gonna talk peppers, guys. I have, I'm trying to guess, eight, 16, no, six, 12, maybe 20-ish or so um, pepper plants in my garden. And that's in two raised beds. So what I brought in today, this is almost a basket full. We've got some nice bell peppers, green and the purple beauties. Those are absolutely gorgeous. And if you're just new to growing your own food, you want lots of color. So that's where a lot of your vitamins come from, your balance of minerals. Um, you don't want to just have greens and reds or yellows and greens or oranges and greens. Definitely not all greens. You want a lot of color. So anytime you can mix in new colors, whether it's reds, oranges, purples, they're all gonna give you something in, in the increase that you wouldn't get in a standard. Whoops, my cucumber fell. No, Rue. Stop. Okay. My, my harvest is overflowing. So for the majority, we've got um, bell peppers and um, in both varieties, mostly banana peppers. I'm going to be pickling these. I'm very interested. These are a sweet banana pepper. Aren't those huge guys? Like, look at this, I get to the telephone. Um, I I'm very interested in doing stuffed sweet banana peppers. I've seen recently stuffed peppers pickled. How great is that? So take some cabbage, some carrots. Um, I can't remember what else she did, but then you stuff your peppers and then you pickle them. So we might try some of that this year. And then there is just the beginnings of jalapenos coming in. So I probably got, oh, I don't know, a nice bottom layer of jalapenos. So we're probably just going to um, add those. Let's see. I like to, for when they're just trickling in like this, to just do um, jalapeno poppers. I will make up a batch of spicy sausage, mix in some cream cheese, um, some shredded cheese, um, half my jalapenos, stuff those, and then just blant, uh, flash freeze them on sheet trays, vacuum seal them, and then you've got them for quick appetizers, quick football snacks during football season, things like that. So that's probably what we're gonna be doing as they're just trickling in because my favorite thing to do with jalapenos is cowboy candy. And I have still probably, and I've given cases and cases of cowboy candy away because we made so much last year. Um, but I would say I probably have three cases left of cowboy candy. So I will do another round just to make sure we're rock solid. But whatever you like to use peppers for, I've made my own hot sauce before. That's so simple. And we might do that even this year. Let's try new flavors of making our own fermented hot sauce. But that is first pepper harvest of the year. Now, let's move on to this proud basket. All right, final big push. So almost, I harvested almost all my red cabbages today. I think there's three or four still out there and then maybe two or three still up in the green stalk. But these are nice, nice, very, very firm heads of cabbage. Oh, this one's really heavy. Okay, beautiful. I mean, bowling ball, eight pounds, I'd say. Six or seven at least, four. Some of them feel heavier than others. So this is all going to be turned into pickled cabbage, pickled coleslaw. You get the drill. If you're not new, if you're not new here, you know it's one of my favorite things to preserve pickled cabbage, pickled coleslaw. It's super simple, super easy. And I've talked about pickling a lot of things today, like maybe I didn't mention it, but we've got the pickles, 
We've got the um, pickled banana peppers I'm going to be doing, the pickled cabbage. I have a recipe on my channel called One Brine to room, Rule Them All, and that's how I accomplish things like today. When there's just a lot of things to get done, don't overcomplicate it. Make one brine, whatever your standard is, pickle all the things with the same brine, and you don't have to worry about all these different recipes, different flavors, because then when you pull it out to use it, you can season it your own way. A couple um, green cabbages, a little smaller. I didn't do as good with my green cabbages, and actually what I learned, oddly, all of the pests, even though I didn't have the cabbage moths, I had the roly polies and the slugs underneath my garden tent this year, they do not bother red cabbage. I don't know why, but they eat up the green cabbage. But these green cabbages came out of my green stalk garden planter, so I will forever probably grow my green stalk, uh, my cabbages in container gardens away from the ground and the pest. So, and then there's one more over here. So that is a lot of cabbage. Let's see. A lot of cabbage. Okay. Now, stay there. Look at this. That's all beets. Guys, I had the hardest time as a first time gardener learning to grow simple crops. Simple crops for other people. Beets was one of those things. I just couldn't figure them out. But, I don't know, put it in front of my face. How big is it? It's like a half a face, half a face. And they're beautiful. So last year was my first year. Do I know what the secret was? Not really. I soaked my beet seeds. That was one thing I did differently. And this year, multi-sowing method for you sow like three beet seeds together. Look at this big boy. Wow. And I have some beautiful, beautiful golden beets. You probably can't see it on the camera too much, but it's like orangey yellow. So these all get turned into pickled beets. See, you're hearing the one brine to rule them all is really gonna help me today. So I'll probably start with getting these roasted. We eat pickled beets during the winter like three times a week. Honestly, it's our favorite go-to condiment or um, side dish. And uh, so all of these, and this is probably, I would say half the harvest. The rest of the harvest were still smaller size, I'll let them grow out till fall and then we'll do a final harvest of beets. So I've talked, oh my gosh, almost about everything. I did bring in one onion the other day just to be able to, um, I think I was showing my, my stepfather how big they were. Um, I, no, I was showing you guys when I did the garden tour, how big they are like palm size wise. I think that they're pretty much done. Um, now the outside leaves haven't completely started dying back, like just these ones, um, but this has been harvested a couple days. So I'm just waiting to see that sign of the outside leaves dying back, but all, they're all falling over. So um, pretty soon we're gonna have to just go out and harvest them so that they don't rot in place. Last basket, what was it? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Basket number five. My favorite new thing this year that I'm growing in the garden, and for first time beginners, just forget about trying to grow standard spinach. Do yourself a favor and just learn from all of our challenges where spinach just bolts on you and it's difficult to get a lot of produce in for enough to preserve. This year, I learned my lesson. This half basket is all spinach I've never harvested this much spinach, period, in a single year. And this is my third harvest of Malabar spinach. So I have these two bags of Malabar spinach. I've already eaten a bag. Um, I was waiting to process those two. I need to wash this up. I'm gonna try canning my spinach this year for the first time. 
Normally I freeze it because I get such little amounts that it's not worth doing a canning session over. But this year with the Malabar spinach, we're gonna have canned spinach on the shelf for all the winter spinach pies to make my stomach so, so happy because spinach pies is one of my all time favorites. And so I'm gonna get this washed up, but this is a huge bumper crop of spinach. Let me just show you if you're not, isn't that beautiful? Listen, this is, mm, 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 mm. July 24th, like I said, that's crunchy and that is sweet in 90 degree heat outside. That's not possible with standard spinach. So that is why I'll always be growing this forevermore. You don't plant it early in the spring like you do normal spinach. You wait till, because it's a heat loving crop, you wait till and plant it like a summer crop. So, Thanks guys for coming through. Not to brag, that's not what this is about. Not to show you, oh, look at this, because honestly, it's been a really hard year for me in the garden. I've hardly gotten out there much at all just because of a lot of things going on in my world with work and just family-related activities. <coughs> so I've dealt with weed pressure and all of that. But guys, we have a huge growing food playlist um, and it's meant to inspire you all so that you can start where you are apply what you know and practice growing your own food so you can have good nutritious organic healthy food sources that are cost affordable that's the main reason I got into this I wanted to eat organic I wanted to just bring all that produce in my household, but it's expensive. So how do you combat that expense? You know, you, you put in the muscle power and the, and the time to um, learn to grow your own food. And it is so rewarding. It is so fun. It gets you active. It gets you outside. It's, um, you know, you're getting filled with the vitamin D, being in the sun. It's just, like I was just sitting outside today if you don't know, part of my job is when there's a major um, storm event and we have um, power outages, down power lines, I'll have to go out and um, secure some down power lines and make sure that the public is safe from those events, call in the right type of crews to come in and repair it. And I was out all last night from 1 a.m. till 8 a.m came home, took a three hour nap, and I knew the only thing that was gonna make me feel better, to center me, to just take the weight of that hard work off was to just go and be in my garden and just do this harvest. So there's a lot of peace and joy that can be found in, in working hard and in feeling that reward coming into your home. So I, I wanted this video just to be an encouraging video, and I hope that you took it away that way. So thanks, guys, and I will talk to you on the next video. It might be canning up some of these goodies, so come back. I hope you join us. Bye, guys.